In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to resize a 2D symbol using the tape measure. Okay, so if I go into the SketchUp file that we provide in course three, you're going to see a whole load of 2D symbols that have been pre-constructed for you to use. And with regards to the current floor plan that I'm creating, I would like to include a sink. So I'm going to include this one right here. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select edit and then copy. Then I'm going to go into my new floor plan, select edit and then paste. And I'm just going to click in the white space to the right hand side of the floor plan. And I would generally refer to that as a safe area, a safe space, um, because it's off to the right of the floor plan or you could paste it on the left hand side of the white space um, if you prefer. So what I'm going to do now is uh, resize the sink because uh, it's a little bit too large, but obviously interior designers, when they're creating floor plans for proposed spaces and uh, new designs, they need to make sure that whatever furniture they are including reflect real world measurements, um, particularly if they are proposing specific items of furniture. So I'm going to resize the sink so that it fits with the dimensions of this vanity unit right here, okay? And the overall measurements um, are the width is 450 and the depth is 310, okay? So they're the measurements that I'm referring to so that my floor plan and the furniture contained within it are accurate. So let's go ahead and resize this sink. In a previous video tutorial, um, I did show you guys how to resize a 2D symbol using the tape measure, um, but I did advise you to bring it into a new file so that you didn't resize all of the geometry in the file. So in this instance, that's not going to happen because this sink is its own independent entity because it's a component. Um, so what I would need to do to resize this sink so that the rest of the geometry, i.e. this floor plan and everything that's contained within it, isn't also resized, is that I need to double click the sink and then resize it, okay? And I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to select the tape measure and what I need to do is press control so that the two dashes and the little cross are no longer visible. And when they are no longer visible, I'm then able to resize. This is something that you need to do um, because SketchUp changed the settings a little, the default settings a little, okay? If you're using a Mac, you need to press Option. So I'm going to press Control, and as soon as I do that, you can see the two dashes and the little cross disappearing. And if I just hover over this, what is the depth of that? No, do you know what? We'll, we'll do the width, 450. Okay, so I'm going to click on the left-hand side and then I'm going to click on the right-hand side and then I'm going to type in 450 and enter. You can instantly see that SketchUp is asking me, do you want to resize the active group or component? My answer to that is yes. And you can see that only the sink has been resized. So let's select the select tool and let's just cancel out of that. Let's zoom in and just double check that measurement to make sure that the width of this sink is now 450. And it is. Great. So let's just double check the depth. The depth is 300. And if I just go back into that website, you can see that the depth of that sink is actually 310. Now, I can't use the resize tool again because um, it will resize the entire sink proportionally. So it will change the width and I don't want to change the width because the width is the correct size. So what I'm going to do is double click 
because I'm going to edit the depth of this sink. I'm going to select my tape measure. Let's just zoom in so we get the really good look at that. And I'm going to click on the edge, drag following the green axis, and I'm going to type 310 and enter. So here is our guide right here. This is where the depth of the sink should be. I'm going to highlight all of the bottom of the sink, making sure that this line, whoops, let's just do that again. Making sure that this edge, this edge, and all of the geometry at the corners here is all highlighted. I'm going to select the move tool. I'm going to click on the midpoint and then release and drag until I reach my guide. And then I'm going to click. And let's just cancel out of that. Let's select the tape measure. Let's double check that measurement. And now you can see that that's 310. And if we just double check the width again, you can see that that's 450. And that sink is now exactly the same size as the sink in this actual real life product. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do actually is just double click to remove that uh, guide. And what I'm going to do now is I've already created a guide here because um, just it's just like a little marking so that I know where to position the sink. So I'm going to select the sink. I'm going to click on one of the edges and snap it to the edge of the wall. I'm going to zoom in so I get a really good view of this because I want to snap this left hand edge on the guide. And if I just click on the white space there, which again is a safe space, you can see that this sink is now completely um, in place where it should be. I'm going to delete that guide. I no longer need it. And I'm going to explode that sink so that um, it's no longer, the face was a little bit obscured there because of the floor. Um, and now if I click my scene, it'll take me right back out. There is my sink. It has been resized to the proper dimensions. Let me just remove uh, visibility of hidden geometry and update my scene. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, the sink has been resized using the tape measure proportionally um, and it now reflects the actual sink in reality that I'm proposing and I've now put it in place and it's accurate and precise which is so important when an interior designer is creating floor plans um, for their design proposals and it's as simple as that.